She grabbed me by the neck, and the rest is a blur. Brews Brothers Microbrewery at Wool and Gabba can satisfy all your beer needs. From a few sneaky samples right up to 50 litre party keg hire. We've got hundreds of recipes including ginger beer, gluten free and cider. And there's no dodgy preservatives or chemicals. Come in for a tour, samples, learn to brew classes or check us out online at brewsbrothers.com.au. Sponsors, the 4 Z. This is Sarah Waters and you're listening to Dykes on Mics on Triple Z. Thanks, Sarah Waters, for um, chatting to us a little while ago. But talking about other people who are chatting to us, I've now got the last announcer for the evening, the last previous announcer of Dykes on Mics on the phone, Liz Mannering. How are you going? I am brilliant this evening. Absolutely brilliant. Just down a glass of red with um, some Panadol, so I'm on, a, I'm on a natural high. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be flying by the end of this one. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I did play that song on his straight girls wear dresses in memory of, of uh, yourself because you are, are actually the... F it's a song that we used to play heaps here at Dykes on Mics, but you're the one that introduced me to Dykes on Mics. Oh, uh, the look, it was going to happen. It, w it would have happened somehow, somewhere, somehow. <laughs> you know, I believe in synchronicities and, you know, I met you. Yeah. And the moment I met you, you just had that voice. You just had that <laughs> charisma. You, <laughs> you walked into that star room and I went, yep, that's a dark on Mike. That's a lesbian <laughs> if ever I saw yeah, one. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like? Yes, we did work together briefly. Bless you. God knows why they actually trusted us with um, with children, but hey. Oh, geez. So, uh, it was drama teaching, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it was all a bit crazy. It's great fun, though. Now... You, my dear, have got a bit of a... I mean, how long were you at the station? Um, well, I started to sort of go in regularly around 96, 97 yep. with the Citrus Witches. Um, Helen Sheehy started that whole um, shebang. She came up from Sydney with some colleagues, some friends, and they were very... Um, they were um, a little bit senior to me and very much um, very activist in terms of getting access to lesbian access to the IVF and fertility treatments so they'd written a play and they got a load of women involved and it was bloody awesome it was fantastic and we all got um involved and it started a big ball rolling and it actually helped the whole legal push and the promote that you know generated awareness for that whole thing and um yeah <laughs> soon after that lesbians had access to fertility treatments in Queensland so it wow. was um quite quite an interesting time to get involved with um, Dykes on Mics and Triple Z and it was fantastic and I was just in awe, like I'd always been in awe of Triple Z from a young age but it was amazing to actually get in there and get involved. Yeah, so I suppose there's been I said, what's, what tied you to Z, what made you want to keep coming back here because there's something about this station that you just can't really put your finger on, I can you know, I, I absolutely adore this place, and as I said, um, I've been here for what, t almost t 10 years now, but what, what did you... Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's scary, isn't it? You realise how no, old no, we're getting... It, well, it blew me away a little bit to think that it's 10 years. It goes very quickly. Yeah. But, um, well, you know, without trying... I'm going to sound like Gay Lemon now and get all spiritual, but the, there is definitely something... Um, there's a higher purpose to it all, obviously. I was around maybe 15 when I first... You know, I used to be kids sitting in their bedrooms flicking through the radio stations and I heard Kate Bush and obviously I liked Kate Bush and I was like, who the hell plays Kate Bush anymore? You know, like, wow, this is... And it's yeah. not the Bush guy. <laughs> you know, it's some rare B-side. Yeah. Who couldn't... You know, just the, the voice and the people speaking, when I started to listen to what they were talking about, it just... I had goosebumps even at 15 just listening to real voices talking about real things. It was like... You know the Truman Show with Jim Carrey? Yeah, when he realises. Like, yeah. yeah, like my whole life had been the Truman Show and all of a sudden, boom, there was Triple Z and all of a sudden it was something real and I, I felt myself just being plugged in from, say, 15 onwards. Animal rights, the environment, all the things that really matter that don't get much of a say in the mainstream yeah. or didn't. Yep. Yeah, and then, of course, realising I was gay and, and coming out as a lesbian. And, and uh, having you know. su support there even as oh, well, you know, back, back when it was not lawful. Now, you've had, you've had as I said, you've done loads of things over the year, years and you even brought the lovely Betty in a few times. I remember <laughs> Betty. Uh, I do Poor remember Betty, Betty very, very oh, well. Betty. Poor old yeah. Betty. Is she going all right? She's, 
Yeah, she's out tonight. She's down at the Bow Desert RSL, so she's, That'd be right. she's having a knees up, trying to chat up the. She's been on this one for a while, you know, trying to chat up the <laughs> bird behind the counter. <laughs> counter. She's getting on your somewhere. Betty. On your bed, yes, good yes, work. Yes. What, what she'll, is, she'll come in and visit soon. Yeah. What are some of your? You've been on the on the Facebook tonight as well, chatting with a couple of people about favourite memories of of um, Dykes on Mics on our Facebook page. But can you talk to, talk us through one of uh, one or two of your favourite uh, moments on uh, working on Triple Z and and doing Dykes on Mics? Oh, there's just been so many, so many good times, and and even not being involved and listening in, you know. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most mind-blowing times, and this is going to sound strange, but, I mean, I was obviously very political, and I still am, um, and two young women came in and they were talking about, uh, and it just, you know, names evade me now, obviously, but um, it was like a, they called themselves Lipstick Lesbians for some... They had a catchy name, and it was all about, at that time, this is going back years ago, um, they didn't feel that um, femme lesbians had much of a place on the dyke scene in Brisbane. Right. So they were coming into Triple Z and they were, you know, trying to push boundaries and everything. And, and at first I realised that I had a little bit of femme phobia, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What are you and doing you know, here with your like high that. heels and lipstick? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> things, you know, always challenge my, all, always challenged my assumptions. Triple Z still challenges my assumptions. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, oh, it still happens. I listen to things and I think, oh, that, I, it, it doesn't matter what show. Obviously, Dykes on Mike to me is something that I really connect with, but all the shows, you're listening and at first you think, oh, that feels uncomfortable. Oh, I don't know what I think about that. And then, yeah, all you know, that's interesting. It, you think, it, exactly. And it stretches you and it makes you think beyond where you're at and I think that's so necessary you know we had a, we had a great time I'm um, having a chat uh, one of them that we had a chat to probably about I think uh, maybe eight months twelve months ago now was actually was a lesbian sex worker yeah you know and that was really interesting for us uh, f for me because it really did challenge my understandings of um, of the, the sex work industry and and why people even do that sort of those jobs and what have you because it's so far removed from my experience um, something, that you, something that you did actually bring up on there was about the show on sedition laws. I remember being here because the day that those sedition laws took effect was a Wednesday, which is the night of our show. And I remember Matilda Alexander came in. She was, um, um, uh, it was a, a, a lawyer or a solicitor. I'm not quite sure what the real Australian term I think it's solicitor. Anyway, yeah. she was in here having a chat. And one of my favourite parts about the entire interview, apart from learning the real implications of this, was about talking what we now wouldn't be able to say and giving examples of what we wouldn't be able to say. And yes, exactly. That for me was the most amount of fun because you come like coming up with all sorts of obscene and ridiculous things like, all right, so I wouldn't be able to say like, uh, John Howard is a slimy airhole that does yes. this, this, and this, and and, yes. and you know has been yeah. No, you wouldn't I'm be able to say that. Breaking those laws, yeah. and, and so many of us are actually breaking those laws at the moment on Facebook without yeah. even realising when we're commenting and we're making you know we're talking about poom and this and poom and that. Um, despite the fact that he may be employ he he might actually be employing some of us mm. in a in a general sort of way, um, we are actually under that sedition law. So we're breaking mm. the law when we're even on Facebook commenting and yeah. things like that. They haven't moved on it yet, but they can, and that's they the can. thing. And yeah. I learned that from just coming into a, a regular Wednesday night show on Triple Z. You know, it, yeah. that information is not in the mainstream, but I tell you what, it it needs to be. And yeah. You know, they're still doing it, still getting the information out there that we all need. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and that night, I'm very embarrassed. If, if Matilda is listening, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I felt really rude afterwards because I was just amazed by her eloquence, and you know, I was very passionate about the subject. And I, I, I sort of almost patted her on the back and said, "Oh my gosh, good on you." Finally, <laughs> <laughs> <Totally> patronising. <laughs> awesome. But, um, we. That's another thing. Over the years, Dykes on Mike's has had so many diverse and amazing people come into the show. You know, just so many people, so many interesting stories. And you don't get that anywhere else either, you know? Yeah. So, but wow, something, being a part of something amazing over the years has just been, 
it's just been incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, I suppose a message now for, um, before we head off, because we're going to have to let the Queer Radio take over shortly, but... I suppose for you, is there a message you wanted to give people about the importance of Zed or subscribing or anything like that, that you know, uh, from your experiences? Yeah, look, I, we all get slack and, and I mean now I have, this is the thing, I, I'm still involved with activism but I, I've moved out into the sticks. We all get disconnected sometimes from our source and the things that protect us and look after us and we take a lot for granted. And um you know, years and years ago when I was a younger person, I remember when there was a Triple Z market day and they used it as a training exercise, um, like an, almost like a military operation. And ordinary, you know, regular people were, were thrown down to the ground and handcuffed and all, you know, crazy things. Um, that can happen again. We're in a, a, a conservative... We have a conservative climate around us at the moment. We can't take anything for granted, and I think that... We can't take Triple Z for granted. It's, it, this is uh, Triple Z does support and connect so many people, and it is it's something that's there. It's like a family member, and you know when it when that family member is ill or you know down on farms. Yeah, you, know, you, you band together and support. Them. Yeah, we band together, and um, yeah, definitely. If you can, if you can even subscribe as as Jay Lemon was saying earlier, even a sex toy or something, whatever you can <laughs> you afford. You can subscribe your pet in the for meantime, fifteen bucks. Just have a pet yeah in the meantime even if you are tight for funds or whatever just do what you can and and it really isn't that much when you consider what what we are all getting out